Okay, let's be real for a sec. Who actually looks forward to setting goals? Right. It can feel like, ugh, more work on top of everything else I have to do. Yeah. But what if I told you this deep dive is like getting a cheat sheet? Ooh, I like that. Right. Your own personal cheat sheet for success. That's what we're diving into today with Goal Setting Simplified by Ray A. Stonehouse. We're going to give you actionable strategies like you can finish listening to this and go apply them today to achieve the things you care about most. And this is coming from someone who, you know, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Tell me more about Ray. Ray Stonehouse, he's not just some self-help, you know, guru. This is a guy who's been in the field for over 40 years. Psychiatric, mental health nursing. He understands what makes people tick. And I love this. He's also been a Toastmaster for over 30 mm. years. So, you know, he knows how to communicate clearly, inspire action, all that good stuff. And it really shows in his writing, too. Like, he's very approachable. Okay, so... We've established he's not going to bog us down with a bunch of jargon. No, no, no. How does he actually simplify this whole goal setting thing? So most goal setting books, they kind of jump right into like the tactics and the strategies. But Stonehouse, he takes a step back and he says, look, you need to get clear on your vision first. Mm -hmm. You know, he asks those really kind of powerful questions, but they're simple. What is it that you want? Like really, truly want? What are your core values? What's important to you? I love that he starts there mm -hmm. because it's so easy to get caught up in what we think we should be doing or what other people are doing. Oh, absolutely. Comparison is the thief of joy. Right. <laughs> and this is where Stonehouse, he really shines because he helps you kind of go, OK, what is it that I want? Let's get those goals aligned with my values. So it's not this should do. It's more like this is part of who I am. This is my path. It's like. If your goal is to climb Mount Everest just because you think you should, good luck. But if it's something you're deeply passionate about because it aligns with your values, it's a totally different ball game. And you're going to be more successful because it's coming from within. Yeah, it's not right. this external pressure. And so to do that, one of the tools he introduces is something called the Eisenhower Matrix. Okay, I've heard of this. Yeah. This sounds familiar. So have you used this? I haven't actually used it, but I've heard of it. Yeah. OK, so, it, you know, it's the four quadrants. Yes. Urgent, not urgent, important, not important. But here's where Stonehouse, he adds his own little twist to it. OK. He says, OK, we're going to connect this to your values. I like it. Yeah. So it's not just about getting things done. It's about getting the right things done. Oh, I like that. So when we look at the Eisenhower matrix, that top left quadrant, those urgent and important tasks, yeah. those need to get done. We're not saying ignore those, but he's saying, look at those and say, are these actually important to me or are they important to someone else? Do they align with my values? So even if it feels urgent, if it's not truly important to me and what I value, maybe I can delegate it, postpone it, or even just say no to it entirely. Exactly. Love it. It's about being very intentional with your time and energy. And then on the flip side, you know, we have that quadrant of important, but not urgent. Yes. And that's the one where a lot of times our goals, our big dreams, they kind of go to die, right? Totally. Like writing that book, I've always wanted to write. Yes. Learning a new language. Yes. Finally training for that marathon. <laughs> it's all that good stuff that just keeps getting pushed back. But he says those are important. We need to schedule time for those yeah. because those are the things that are going to lead to long-term success and fulfillment. He wants you to look at these goals, not as, oh, I should, but as an investment. You're investing in your future self. I love how he connects that back to values. That's brilliant. Yeah. But once we know what we should be focusing on, how do we make sure we get it done? It can't just be writing it down and hoping for the best. Right. right. We need a plan. And that's yeah. where our friend, the SMART goal comes in. Okay. Whenever I hear SMART goals, I have to admit, part of me is like, Ugh, really? That again? Yeah, right. Like, I feel like I hear about SMART goals all the time. But then again, I can never remember all the letters. Right. So maybe it's a good thing. It's a good refresher. Yeah, Stonehouse, he lays it out so clearly. And he reminds us why it stood the test of time, because it works. Okay, so indulge me. Right. Remind us what SMART stands for and how Stonehouse uses it. So S-M-A-R-T, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And the way he kind of helps us visualize it is he compares it to going on a road trip. Okay, I like where this is going. So, you know, if we were to say, let's take a road trip, let's go somewhere fun, that's kind of like setting a goal that's not very specific. It's a start, but where are we going? How are we going to get there? How long is it going to take? That's where SMART comes in. So instead of just road trip, it's 
We're driving down the California coast to Big Sur. It's 300 miles. We're going to take this specific highway and we're going to leave Friday morning and get there Saturday afternoon. Exactly. I like it. You've taken this kind of vague desire and you've made it really concrete. Yes. And that's what the each of these elements of SMART does for our goals. Okay. So my goal of learn to code, mm -hmm. that could use some smartifying. Can you give me an example for each of those yeah. using that as an example? Absolutely. So learn to code. That's the kind of vague goal. So specific, what kind of coding? What are you hoping to do? So instead of learn to code, maybe it's learn HTML and CSS to build a basic website. Okay, that's way more specific. Right. What about measurable? Like how do you measure? I'm learning to code. Right. So you could say complete an online HTML and CSS course that has quizzes and a final project. So you're looking for those tangible milestones. So you can track your progress. Exactly. Okay. I like it. What about achievable? Because I don't know anything about coding. This is a big one. And Stonehouse, he talks a lot about being realistic. Yes. Because a lot of times we set these goals and they're just not attainable and then we get discouraged. So for achievable, instead of saying, I'm going to go build this complex web application, it's like, okay, I'm going to start with a basic website using HTML and CSS. Right. Because if you aim too high too quickly, you're going to get discouraged and give up. Exactly. You're setting yourself up for failure. Okay. Relevant. How does that play into my coding journey? So this is where you're connecting it back to those values that we talked about. So asking yourself, why am I learning to code? What's the bigger picture here? Maybe it's you have that business idea that you need a website for, or maybe it's just, I want a creative outlet. I think this would be fun. And if it's not relevant to you and your goals, you're probably not going to stay motivated. Exactly. And then finally, we have time bound. This is where we're putting that deadline, that sense of urgency. So instead of just saying someday I'll learn to code, it's I'm going to complete this online HTML and CSS course within the next three months. Ooh, a deadline. See, I'm deadline driven. I work best with a deadline. And that's okay. That structure can be really helpful. Okay, that makes total sense. I love the road trip analogy. But life doesn't always go according to plan, right? Mm -hmm. How does Stonehouse deal with that whole life happens thing? Well, he actually dedicates a whole chapter to adaptability. Oh, interesting. He talks about how, you know, setbacks, detours, they're not failures. They're just part of the process. I mean, easier said than done, right? Yeah. How do we actually embrace those curveballs without letting them totally derail us? Yeah, he talks about the art of the pivot. Ooh, I like that. Where, you know, when those winds change, we've got to adjust our sails, but we're still heading towards that same destination. Okay, I love that. So it's not about giving up entirely. It's about finding a new path when the first one's blocked. What's that look like in real life? So remember Bruce, our friend who wanted to run the 5K? Yes, yes. So he's a few weeks into training and he sprains his ankle. Oh, no. That's the worst. <laughs> right. Talk about a setback. But this is where that art of the pivot comes in. Because it would have been so easy for him to just be like, ugh, that's it. I'm done. I'm off track. Forget this. Right. But instead... He shifted his focus to what he could do. So he focused on strength training, cross training, looked into, you know, exercises to strengthen his ankle. So when he could run again, so smart, he'd be ready. Yeah. Using that time to learn and come back even stronger. Exactly. And Stonehouse even points out that sometimes when we pivot, we end up somewhere even better than we had planned. OK, I like that. You know, there's the story about Michael who had his sights set on this specific leadership role at his company. OK. And then company restructures, things change. Yeah, that's always a curveball. So initially, of course, he's disappointed, right? Yeah. But he used that as an opportunity to step back and say, okay, if I'm really honest with myself, what is it that I want? What happened? Well, through that process, he realized that it wasn't necessarily leadership that he was passionate about. It was this certain aspect of the business. And actually, this restructuring kind of opened a door for him to pursue that. Interesting. So he ended up taking a completely different path bet. that he hadn't even considered before. And it turned out to be way more fulfilling for him. Sometimes we think we want something and then life gives us that, what if we go this way? And it turns out so much better. Absolutely. I love but it. But I know like all this pivoting and embracing change, it can feel kind of overwhelming. So Stonehouse, he gives us some really practical tools to deal with that. Yes. Give us the goods. So one of the things he talks about is doing a weekly win review. Okay. And this can be super simple. It's just taking a few minutes at the end of each week to reflect. What went well? What were my challenges? What adjustments do I need to make? I like that because it's easy to just keep pushing forward without stopping to 
kind of take stock of where we're at. Exactly. And even if you just take five minutes to just be like, okay, let me look back. Let me celebrate some wins because we've got to celebrate the wins. Yes. And he reminds us this isn't about being perfect. This is about making progress. Those small steps, they add up. Absolutely. You know, he talks about Dawn, this woman who was starting her own business. Okay. And she was just feeling so overwhelmed by all of it because it's a lot, right? Yes. Yeah. Starting a business is like, you're climbing a mountain and you don't even know what's at the top yet. Exactly. Exactly. And so she started this practice of like even just celebrating the small milestones. You know, she'd write them down, tell a friend, like really celebrate those small wins to kind of give herself that momentum. It's so important to acknowledge how far we've come instead of just focusing on what's next. Exactly. Exactly. So as we're kind of wrapping up here, our deep dive into goal setting simplified, what are some of the like most powerful takeaways things our listeners can start implementing today don't approach it like a to-do list that you have to check off perfectly like start with your why what's important to you use those smart goals create your roadmap and then be open to adjusting along the way love it be flexible celebrate the small wins be kind to yourself all that good stuff well this has been fascinating i've learned so much thank you me too and this is just the start right yeah It's a journey. It's ongoing. It never ends. Yes, exactly. Well, thanks for joining us today for this deep dive. We'll see you next time as we explore another fascinating topic together.